Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Could surgeons use a patient's own anatomy to create 3D printed life-size organ models to map out challenges ahead of time, making surgery more precise, efficient, and less invasive? Is it possible? It already is. Because every day we're doing what's never been done. Learn more at mayoclinic.org slash possible. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go. Spoiler alert, everybody. Um, (laughs) I love Hallmark Christmas movies, and there's a reason for it. It's because I love things that bring me hope. And these movies do that. They end with happy stories. Plus, I've gotten to know some of the people that make these movies, and that makes a difference. And that's also one of the reasons why I love Thistle Farms. It's a company that gives me hope. And also, thanks to Thistle Farms, I know some of the people that make the products. Let me explain. Thistle Farms is a nonprofit social enterprise that creates hope for women survivors of trafficking, prostitution, and addiction by hosting two free years of housing, trauma therapy, and health care. This way, women have a safe space to heal from years of abuse and addiction, and they are employed so that they can earn a fair wage to safely provide for them and their families. I got a box of Thistle Farms products, and I absolutely loved it. But the thing that I loved about the products is, one, they were wonderful, but two, inside the box, it told me who made the products. It, it, it put a face to the, 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 the product that I was using of somebody actually handcrafting this soap and this bracelet and some things that they put together in this box. It was just phenomenal. The stories actually matter. They bring uh, hope to the the story, and also they give me a connection to the product. So I would encourage you, if you're looking for a gift this holiday season, head to thistlefarms.org to start shopping for candles, gift sets, essential oils, and even their global leather goods. They have it all. And it all supports life change for women survivors. And use the promo code DECTHEHOMEWORK to check out uh, and get 15% off your purchase. That's thistlefarms.org, promo code DECTHEHOMEWORK. Here's today's episode. Hi, I'm Bran, and I love Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm Brian, and I like Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm Jen, and I love Deck the Hallmark Podcast. And this is is the the Deck Deck the Hallmark Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's his podcast. (laughs) Bran, Dan, and friends host his podcast. (laughs) We hope you like this jolly podcast. Oh, it's Christmas, oh, yeah. everyone! Oh, it's Christmas! Boy. Sound the alarm! Jen's here! That's how you know. Wah, wah, wah. It's, a Chris, it's a Christmas tradition. Tradition unlike any other since exactly. the first season. Wow. Hi, Jen Kirkman. Hey, guys. Hi, it's such an honor. And hi, Brian. We, we talked offline just now for mm-hmm. a second, but you, you fit in so well. And this, I can't believe, I mean, I you're not allowed to destroy this tradition, so... <laughs> Um, thank you. I will. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> yeah, I'll revolt. So, but thank you for letting me continue to be part of it. And, and I love everyone and hi rig and hi trace and hi everybody. And <laughs> hi. Love it. hello there, Jen Kirkman. <laughs> hi, I'm looking forward to writing our show together. <laughs> Oh, sure. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the No Fun podcast with Jen Kirkman. I have a ton of fun listening to the No Fun. Oh, You're wow. not supposed oh, thanks, to. Thanks, Ring. Yeah, huh. it's good. I line up more with Jen politically than you'd think for a man that wears cargo pants. <laughs> I, I do not believe that. Yeah, I don't believe that. I, I do not believe that. <laughs> the podcast is satire, correct? It's not real. It's not a real. Uh, that's right. It's, it's okay. satire. Good, 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 good. Everything good. you hear. She's playing a character. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's all going together now. Um, happy Thanksgiving to you. Uh, any big Thank Thanksgiving you. plans for you? Just eating my face off. I'm here in Massachusetts. Shout um, out. So I'll be with family. Shout out to Massachusetts. Ooh, ooh. I'll be with family, seeing old friends. You know how it goes. This, this is what the time of year is for. What do you uh, like to eat on Thanksgiving? What's well, on your I've, plate? I've listened to you guys uh, recently in the running for president <laughs> thing. And, and, you know, my Not favorite a bit. is... Not a no, bit. I know. Oh, not a bit. My contribution you got. Right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super pack. Yeah. You know, I, I've been a vegetarian most of my life, but I 
truly like I used to get made fun of all the time for just eating all the sides. People were like, you don't have turkey. What do you have? And now these days I feel like everyone's like, I don't even like turkey. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting to hear you guys be like, it's not even about the turkey. So for me, it's potatoes and stuffing and cranberry Mm -hmm. sauce and all like I used to put black olives on my fingers when I was a kid, you know, the cheap ones from the can. And yeah, uh, when you were a kid, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last you year, know, the yeah. eggnog, maybe throw a little Bailey's in there in the morning. Mm-hmm. The, um, all the desserts. Now I'm a big apple pie with vanilla ice cream. Uh-huh. Just very simple. Yeah, very yeah, American. Yeah. yeah. Now we mm-hmm. are running on the steak at Thanksgiving platform, um, <laughs> and all you can eat which does seem problematic for and a vegetarian. You sent us a contribution anyway, which so was very watch. kind, but what can like, what, how can yeah. we, how yeah. can we like, what, what are the issues that matter to you when it comes to listen, we're yeah. the steak, steak for Thanksgiving yeah. platform. So like, we're not going to get overly serious, like just be good to people. But is there yeah. anything that we can do to, to really like, you're, you're going to go campaign for us? like. Well, I mean, I'm going to campaign for you anyway, but what would really set me over the edge until just like you got me for life is that, you know, I don't, as a vegetarian, I don't care if people eat steak. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't gross me out. So I'd say just like ban all annoying jokes about vegetarians when you guys are all eating your Genius. steaks. As long as you have enough yeah. sides for me, baked potatoes, broccoli, lots of butter, bread. That's all I care about. Yeah. Brand's yeah. big on um, the bread. Steak. I love bread. You can't bread. have steak yeah. without bread. God, I feel like the platform bread. should be steak, but a lot of bread for the vegetarians. Yeah. And I'm sorry, you know, and listen, everyone's going to have issues. You're going to have your gluten free and your this and that. And that's okay. It's, you know, I feel like if you guys are just open to suggestions for more food, mm. You know, yeah. then I think you got a winning platform. And I also think that we should, if you have time, add to the campaign that Christmas officially begins on midnight on October 31st. Let's not. Right. Let's yeah. not. No, I, well, yeah. I you think do need to expand the base. Jen, Jen's right about expanding the base. I, I, I think important. it is important because we, while we are the steak for Thanksgiving platform, there is room at our table for everybody. And I that think that beautiful. that's yeah. important. Yeah, that yeah. Was beautiful, of course. Man. So yeah. bring your bread, whatever bread works for you. Um, oh, I have to bring my own. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well uh, Jesus, she's out. She's out. Slowly backing away from the microphone. I thought the no, government no. provided me free bread for Ooh, life. We misspoke. Ooh. You get bread. Yeah. We we have bread for you. If you want any of like that Ezekiel gluten free bread, <laughs> yeah, I don't no, no. know. I can't even touch yeah. it. My yeah. hands will burn. Yeah. I can't do I it. I want <laughs> bread that just bloats me like Santa Claus immediately. <laughs> I want like white bread. You'll mushy. fit right in at our table. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Is there yeah, anything yeah. better than going to a nice restaurant and you order a steak, but you've eaten too much? much bread before the steak gets there and then you're like uh oh I mean, they, I, I they the oil with the pepper and oh the my parma, god what am i supposed to do They're not gonna, eat a whole loaf of bread you're only human and by the way that's what i'm saying with my friends that love steak so much i've been to steak houses with them they never finish the whole thing because again they've eaten the bread mm-hmm. and all the oil and we need to make a restaurant how about this you guys refund me my super pack donation so i can start a restaurant <laughs> called wine and bread only Ooh. I think we can work on the name, but I do keep, like the premise. How about we keep the money? You uh-huh. still work on the restaurant concept, and that's, we'll go from there. No, we'll <laughs> give you half, half the money about back. That. Half yeah. the money back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, half she money. must have given a ginormous <laughs> donation. <laughs> it has been. no idea. Well, we already bonused it out. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. What? No. <laughs> that's not allowed. That's not all. how no it works. My family is getting gifts this year because of my yeah. donation to you guys was pretty sizable. <laughs> You'll probably get a card, though, from the campaign that you could yeah, 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 yeah. Some write their names on. Something for sure. That's even. That's equal. Your presence is everyone's present. Mm, mm. I like to think. <laughs> um, let's talk about princes and inventing them at Christmas time. It's time to okay. talk about inventing the Christmas prince. It originally aired on November 18th, 2022. And it went a little something like this. Uh, a narrator explains that there's a Christmas prince that rules over the North Pole. <laughs> Dan, shut up. I don't even say anything. Hard asses. I don't, I'm Hard sorry. Asses. Silly, yeah. silly down. Shush down. S- simmer down now. Sim-sima. Cut to Shelby, who is uh, telling this story to uh, a group of kids. Apparently, the Christmas prince picks one boy to be the king and one girl to be the queen. This is a story that she made up and is telling it to her daughter's class in between her break. As a rocket engineer, uh, she gets back to the office just in time to shoot off a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> just in just time. made it. Just in time. And the whole group cheers. Uh, we meet uh, her boss, Evan, who apparently everyone in the office hates so much, he is at risk of being fired. 
He is, uh, which is, if that's how we were uh, handling things, Dan would have been fired a long time ago. Uh, he, he is told that if one more employee quits, he's fired. And this is a live look at, t- at Twitter right now. Uh, Shelby's daughter really misses her dad, and uh, she makes a wish upon a star that she'll be the Christmas queen this year. Uh, the next day, Evan asks all of his employees to work on Christmas Day. And Shelby isn't having it. And she quits. But before she can leave, Grace, the daughter, comes into the office, sees a mark on his hand. And you know what that means. He should get it checked out. And he's the Christmas prince. So she freaks out and gives him a big hug. So now Shelby's faced with a dilemma. She has to tell uh, Grace that the prince isn't real. Except... She doesn't. She goes into Evan's office and is and is like, hey, if you don't play along with this Christmas Prince bit, I quit for real, which means you lose your job. Classic Christmas blackmail. If that's not jolly, I don't know what is. So he agrees, and uh, then we see a list of stuff that he has to do, and it's a lot. It starts with a Christmas sleepover. He's not going to sleep over. He's just stopping by everyone. Uh, the girls ask him questions like, why don't you have a princess? They ask him for a story, and he tells the worst story of all time, reindeer plague and all. But Grace freaking loves it. She's like, let's kill more reindeer. Draws him a picture and convinces Shelby that the prince... Uh, to Shelby and the prince to go out on a date. And the date is an absolute disaster. The next wish is uh, Grace wants Christmas tea with the prince, which ends up actually going really great. Uh, Shelby is like, oh, man, Grace is growing attached to this guy. Uh, Evan starts trying, um, trying a little bit at work to be like caring of his employees and learn their names and whatnot. And Shelby and Evan go to the roof and look up at the stars and talk. Then the next day, he throws a surprise Christmas party. What a guy. He gives everybody Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off. Yay. What a man. Uh, But then he gets a call from his boss saying that he's under review. So you got to keep stepping it up, boy. Uh, He keeps doing all the Christmas Prince stuff. He's crushing that. Shelby gets a call from her dream company that she's uh, that she's basically has the job, but she has to move by the end of the year. She decides to turn down the job after another amazing night with Evan under the stars. Evan finds out that the board wants to meet with him at the same time as the Christmas dance was the last thing on the list of the Christmas Prince stuff. So he goes to tell Shelby that he can't make the dance. She's upset with him, the situation, but ultimately she's upset with herself for lying to her daughter for years. Grace is like, nah, mom, you're wrong about this. He's going to be at the dance. And I got to be honest, I'm actually with Grace on this one. I do think he will be at the dance. Uh, Evan ends up getting a promotion um, and thanks to uh, thanks them by uh, running out of the meeting. It says, thank you for the promotion. I will be leaving now uh, to make it to the dance. Before he can get there, he gets a call from Shelby and Shelby is like, I need you to know it's not just Grace that's lo- that loves you. I think that I do too. And he's like, then turn, turn around, girl. And uh, he's like in Prince garb. And he has a horse and a carriage. And he gives Grace a crown and they go for a ride. And then he gives Shelby a tiara. Uh, and Grace asks if that makes her a princess. She says one step at a time. They kiss. And that, my friends, was Inventing, Inventing the, the Christmas, Christmas Prince. Prince. We did it. Exactly right. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to break this movie down with four segments here on Deck, Deck the Hallmark. Hallmark. Really good. Close. Really close. good. Oh, man. Whoa, 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 Boy. bud. You seem really distressed. Oh, it's like the most stressful time of the year. Don't say that. Okay, I'm, I'm so, I feel bad about that. I just don't know what to get anybody for anything. Don't think about all the things you got to do, Ryan. That's good. Think about like, mm. I don't know. Think about people. Like, what do you think mm. people are into? I think people like to see nice things that they like to look at. Right, I think that's true. They like to look at me. Okay, well. My, yeah, sometimes me. My kids, for, for sure. sure. For sure. For sure. So that's what I got so far. Let me try to workshop Have this. Have you thought about maybe like a picture frame? 
a picture frame? That'd be great. But like, you know, it'd be great as if it changed a lot. That's an idea. I don't know. Changed a lot. Like when you're looking at it. Oh, the picture. Yeah. Dude. This is like, it's probably not invented yet. So. Uh, oh, who's Whoa. that? Is that Mark Twain? Uh, no, it's I don't think it's the skylight frame. Oh, you know, have I told you about this? Uh, you know, I think I feel like I heard you talking about this, yeah, but I didn't know this was for me. I got a skylight frame that I love in my house. It's exactly what you're describing. It's a picture frame. The pictures change. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. You can upload pictures super easy through the app or through a special email address. Really? Yeah, I could give you this email address and you could send me pictures of whatever you want to. Whatever, anything. Which is exactly why I haven't given you my email address for the Skylight That Frank. makes sense. But you can get two different sizes, a 10-incher or a 15-incher. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, Brian. So if mm. you don't like this sucker, the folks at Skylight Frame will be there to help you out. And you can put pictures on it so that when you're... A uh, person that you're giving it to opens it up. They plug it in. Oh, Whoa. wow! Just like Mark Twain wrote about. Yeah, my yeah, that's exactly right. My mom loves hers. I love mine. It's the perfect gift. And here's the thing, Brian. Are you ready for this? Write this down. Get okay, a pencil. Get, get a pencil. Got it. I got a special offer for you. Okay, you're gonna get fifteen dollars off hmm. your purchase of a skylight frame when you go to skylightframe.com. Enter code Hallmark. Did you get that? I got skylightframe.com promo code Hallmark. Yes, that's S K Y L I G H T F R A M E dot com promo code Hallmark for fifteen dollars off your purchase. Oh, I had Hallmark spelled wrong, so yeah, thanks. That's for... okay. You get your Christmas shopping done today, okay, pal? <laughs> yeah, All stress right. is gone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're back. Hello, everybody. We're breaking down inventing. The Christmas Prince, or the friend Jen Kirkman. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to start with the hot take, and I will start with you, Brian. Yep. Brian, mm -hmm. what do you think of inventing the Christmas Prince? Okay. So this one, this movie had quite possibly the most delicious-looking hot chocolate I've seen in a movie okay. or in real life during wow. that dance. Delicious. Uh, hot chocolate aside. <laughs> okay. okay. It just looked really Great. good. Great. I'm glad really to hear good. it, buddy. But the lie went on too long for me. It just, the lie was never ending. And it just was, I didn't like, I did not like that. I don't like the lies in the movies. And this was just, just going on and on. And it's tough because she's a single mom and she wants to give her kid the best Christmas ever. She has a lot on her plate. She wanted to do the best that she could for a girl. It's very admirable. Uh, she's a pro. The two leads is Ronnie Rowe Jr. Like, it's hard to make someone so smooth seem like such a nerd yep. and uptight. Like he did a great job in that role. Uh, Samara, I believe it, <laughs> it's not Samara. <laughs> Samara, she a pro. So the two leads are pros. It's just, I just, I had a, uh, I had a realization while I was watching this movie that kind of depressed me, kind of like upset me a little bit, but I, I kind of got back on board, but it was that she was there. She can't leave like the, a single mother, a single parent can't leave. And the whole time, the, after she blackmailed him, yes, a little blackmail, whatever, he was doing everything he could to get out of the situation. And he, he could leave. He could leave at any time. And she just is constantly trying to get him to stay and fulfill this, like, one magical Christmas she wants to have for her daughter. And so it just made me think, like, to feel, like, really hard for single parents at this time. Like, you're doing everything. Like, the lie is ridiculous. It's crazy. You shouldn't do that. It went too far. But you want your kid to have a magical Christmas. And I can't. Like, I can't blame her for doing that. And so it just made me think, like, the single parents, man, what a hard time when you're trying to do all these things. And so it kind of, like, it was sort of a feels, but sort of like a... Brian really little, bringing down the room. You know, I'm so, I know, but... So his overall, Christmas cards to all of his single mom friends just say, you can't ever leave. Merry you, Christmas. Can't, you, are, you can't ever uh, leave in so, all caps. Yeah, That's all it says. <laughs> it was just a realization, you know? It was just like, wow, it's it's, it's a lot. So overall, like... That aside, I it was not I had like not so positive feelings of the movie, and then Evan said, "Turn around," oh, and turn it changed around. everything. <laughs> Talk about nailing an ending of a movie! It made it the my most my favorite ending this season of a movie. I that little girl. What? Yeah, yeah they yeah they're lying to her. <laughs> it's wrong. They shouldn't do it. But they made her, all of her dreams come true. She got the he showed up as a prince. In her world, that's the he's a prince. There's a carriage, 
Snowball, the horse is there. Shout it, out. Shout out to Snowball. <laughs> it all shout came true for this little girl. And she had the most like precious magical Christmas that she could possibly have. So now they have to untangle the lie. They got to deal with that nonsense. But I, that ending, I w- in the song, boy, that song at the end, man, what a difference the right music can make. But that ending turned it around for me. I I don't You're want, embarrassing. I don't want to watch it again. I won't recommend it. Those two R's on my system. Zero, <laughs> not, not getting points for those two R's. I'm not recommending. I'm not rewatching. But that ending mm-hmm. was impressive. Oh Very nice. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, Jen Kirkman. <laughs> okay. I'll spare y'all my hot feminist take about the princess culture and the prince stuff that I just didn't have as a child of the seventies. This was pre princess culture. So like I didn't get raised with all this print stuff is I feel like it's kind of newer. It's something my niece is contending with, with raising her kids, but I'll, I'll skip all that. But I feel like the same way as Brian does not that single parents can't ever leave, <laughs> can't leave. but I, I <laughs> felt you like, <laughs> you know, well, first of all, the reason I offered to watch this show was this movie and asked Brian specifically if I could is I was intrigued by rocket scientist. This is a new job for Hallmark <laughs> movies. And I was impressed that she didn't also have to plan a party and be a rocket scientist and go Christmas shopping for the boss and be a rocket scientist. So it was fun and kudos for a new type of job. So I will spare you my rant about princes and princesses and and raising daughters that way. But I will say the real missed opportunity to not have them uh, have Santa Claus somehow be something that interferes with whatever they're tracking. Like, oh my God, we don't know why, but this thing went off course, um, you know, or maybe she invents a Santa tracker app or something like that. But I just felt like there was a missed opportunity there. At one point, I wasn't sure if they were confusing astronomy and rocket science. Like there's that, <laughs> there's that. Um, they most definitely were. <laughs> yeah, because they mentioned the stars a lot. And I was like, I don't know if that's what no. Mars, planets, star. Okay, no. It, no. I mean, technically some planets are stars but I don't think that's what they meant. But I will say this. So the single mom kind of thing, what really bothers me is I'm getting a little tired of these movies that make me sad where it's like, oh, a single mom and, you know, the daughter just really misses the dad. Like the mom had her village that it took to to help her with her grief. And the daughter didn't like set something up for the kid and like grief counseling something. But this whole Prince story. It's like, why are you? It's like, oh yeah, we could do things, you know, uh, that don't indulge a child's fantasy. Uh, that if it doesn't come true, she'll be so disappointed, which is compounding the grief from her dad. Like, I'm I just, I can't even, guys. I can't even speak because I'm just a straw has broken my proverbial camelback. Mm. Like I, I can't do dead dad kid is sad anymore. Can't do it. This, this is my one life to live. This is my favorite season. So I have a pitch because as you know, I wrote tis the season to be married. Co-wrote it. Mm-hmm. I think the movie should be Tamara. Tamara was an aunt who's single. And one night she babysat her sister's kid. Cause the sister and husband went to a work function. And as the aunt, sorry guys, aunt, Brian knows what I mean when yeah. I say aunt. aunt. Yeah, it's aunt. Uh, yeah. You aunt. say it wrong. Yeah, it's aunt. <laughs> As the aunt, she tells her niece the Christmas Prince story, not thinking the kid would take it so seriously. So the kid has parents and all this. And now the kid is like going back to the parents, like, what about the Christmas Prince? And they get mad at, at Ta- Tamara, the aunt. And they're like, you can't, you don't have kids. You don't get it. You can't just like keep telling them all these lies. And now we have to keep up with it. And she ends up hiring a Christmas Prince and she falls in love. And, and the niece finds out that there's no such thing, but she's just so happy your aunt fall in love. Like you get everything the same in the movie, everything. What you described as a better movie, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hands down. You know why? Because we're not sad about a child whose yeah. dad died and she gets emotionally attached to a stranger in 10 minutes. That's Bingo. Right. Bingo. Okay, so one thing they lost here is, is is you know, Tamara's funny. She's, she's yeah. and they didn't use her comedic skills. You know, give her a movie where she has to have more of a caper. So all in all, for me, I won't rewatch, I won't rewind, and I won't uh, rejoice because I'm angry. Like, I'm actually angry, and I didn't come here to be angry. I love it. So no, no for me, dog. <laughs> what well, uh, what everyone has said so far, I can see. Oh no! Oh no. god! Oh, no. <laughs> well, Brian, I um. Well, there comes a time. <laughs> I was reminded by uh, something that uh, Jesus did. Oh good gosh! <laughs> which is he wept. 
he wept. <laughs> when he saw this movie. When he saw the movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. When I guys, I want to paint. A, I want to paint a paint. picture. You're an artist. Mm-hmm. Turn turn around, and I'm just like oh, when that. Ha- yeah. I though I just yeah. I just lose it. Yeah. I'm losing my mind, yep. guys. I love this movie. <laughs> I everything that everybody is saying. I I can see it. Sure. I understand what you're saying. It's fine. But you know what? Lie to your kids. I don't care. It gave me this movie and it was awesome. I loved it. I loved everything about this movie. Double down on the lie. Triple down on the lie. I don't care because what it gave me was turn around and it made everything worth it. It was awesome. I loved it. I'm just over there just like this. I, I, you know, my kids are like running around me. I'm just like, shut up for a minute. I got to watch this movie and I'm just bawling. They're like, dad, are you okay? And I'm like, piped out. (laughs) They invented the Christmas print. It was a religious experience for me. I absolutely adored this movie. It almost broke my top three, but it did break my top five. Stop it. Stop it. Finally, we can stop talking about my top three. Dan? Wow. This is embarrassing. It's embarrassing (laughs) for the two of you. I'm putting you in there, too. That's fine. This is a movie... Of the snowball effect of systematically lying to your child for a current feeling of okay and years of trauma later. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll skip straight to what the hallmark. I want to know the therapy bills. (laughs) I just want to know them right now. When this girl is 25 years old and she's thinking through the sheer number and size and scope of the lies her mom told her just to make her feel okay. Or she thinks about how sweet no. it was that her mom she wanted to bring her some yeah. joy at Christmas time. No, she's we'll going to be like, is my dad even really dead? My mom's oh, a true liar. Right. No. She's liar. such a liar. Is she there, might. It, well, it just depends, Dan. <laughs> if the girl's like you, yeah, she's yeah. going to be a freaking monster. But if she's full of <laughs> whimsy and fun like me, she's going to be like, man, that was dope what my mom did. It was that not- was dope. Mm-hmm. It, it, in no world is this dope what the mom did. In no world. Nine Zero times world. out of ten, it's not dope. She's Nine, trying. This is no. the one. What is no. she supposed to do? Not try? No, uh, she's supposed to love her kid through the grief and process it like she says, one thing we at a all time, do, all movie we, long. We That's all process say. things yep. differently. Some, of us, some of us lie about it <laughs> our whole you life. Know, I'm kind of I'm kind of with Bran on this in the sense that like <laughs> yeah! That's right. Well everyone, you know, everyone experiences things like being lied to differently. Like some people would be like, that was awesome. And you just never know. But I say, don't take the chance in the first. Yeah. Don't lie to your kids is the, is the message here. I will also say this, Ronnie Rowe, who's been on the show before is a, a super dynamic, smooth as can be. Has Ronnie Rowe been on the show before? If not, we've talked to him a bunch. I think we talked to him a lot about being on the show. If he's not been on the show. He has been on the show. Okay. Cause we talked to him a lot. We have talked to Ronnie Rowe. Okay. Um, his He's voice, your it's your boy, your Ronnie Rowe. <laughs> his voice is smooth as silk. Mm. He's got all the confidence in the world. And so it's also weird him trying to play off type, it, which was wild. And then lastly, like if the rest of this should just be, just kick it right up the road. Can I introduce you to what I believe is called, I want to make sure I get this right. Satellite boost lab. <laughs> <laughs> the place, Are the they place where the scientists go to launch the rocket is a five cubicle floor in an industrial complex called Satellite Boost Lab. A beautiful valley. They could not have treated the industry of rocket science with any less respect than what they did. They don't even know what it is. They're lying to themselves that they're rocket scientists. They're lying to their children about this Christmas prince. And they're literally going out of their way to lie more for no other reason than it makes them feel better about their lives. This movie is actively bad on a number of levels, and I hated every fiber of it. The only reason it's not down there with the troop movie is because there's some legit laughers in this. I may have laughed as much in this as I did in Three Wise Men and a Baby for entirely oh. different reasons, <laughs> but I did laugh a lot in this movie, especially at all the rocket science stuff, which we'll get to later. This is a disaster. It's one you cannot look away from, but it, it make no mistake, it is a disaster. All the way down to that end that Brain is crying over. I love it's the a disaster. Way. I, I love the way you lie. <laughs> Guarantee it. That's exactly it's right. It's a Christmas prince. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Let's uh, let's do feels. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Right. The Christmas prince scene at the end took my breath away. It was 
my favorite, like I said, it's my favorite scene this season. You guys they have did a problem. That so well. I did not see it coming. Yeah, the problem is Christmas joy. Yeah. Oh, something over you know nothing side. about. You can feel it. It's like freezing cold right here, but just beautiful and glowing over here. It, it, I didn't see it coming. They did it so well. Uh, I, uh, the music, everything about it was just, it was my favorite scene of the season. Uh, Jen? Okay. Um, this is unorth- unorthodox, I realize, but I got punch and Nazi feels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that's it. You don't need that- to explain that at all. That's it. That's okay. I think we all understand. <laughs> the, uh, that Sherman, that little Hitler youth, yep. that little blonde boy who's like, you don't have a family. You don't have a dad. He is actively evil. That's right. Yeah. It is not a phase. You cannot rehabilitate him. He must be destroyed. Yes. yes. <laughs> I know it's a child. I love kids, but this is not a child. Right. No. This is a either a demon or a Hitler youth that was frozen in time and came back. He is horrible. And I had feels of just anger that he would talk to anyone that way. And then it made me angry at the movie again that, you know, the, the message of some families only have two people. I guess that's only okay once you know you're going to eventually be saved by, you know, a, a, a prince. So I, I just started with a punch of Nazi feel, then went back back to the anger. Um. So when... <laughs> No, that's not. Listen, that I'm going to skip you real quick. Brand just that, muted my mic. That, they were th- th- that was my feels too. I did not write down punch and Nazi feels, but this kid mm. was just a spawn of Satan. <laughs> he's a real Brandon like, Kaiser. He was he's a real, <laughs> a real Brandon real. Kaiser. He's just all, like yeah. there's not like I would pray that there's not a child alive this mean. Yeah. Because Mm-mm. that I, I just can't imagine <laughs> oh, that world. Boy. Um and then for them to let him say I was I was kidding all along at the end of the movie. Mm. I mean, come on, people. I, I was learned I couldn't a joke, it. buddy. That's right. That's not funny. That's uh, right. Uh, when uh, obviously the end of this movie, uh, uh, best ending of a movie, I think this side of anything, maybe like Shatter? the Sixth Sense, like from a like, <laughs> wow, stick with me. Uh, but uh, when he showed up with the uh, the keyboard because she wanted a grand piano, brings it in, she d- hits a few notes. <sighs> Boy, loved like it. One, huh? I loved it. And I don't want to talk about it too much because I'll start crying again. Uh, let's take a quick break. Well. we'll come right back and we'll do the wait what's here on Deck the Hallmark on WTOO Timmy's Timber. Time. Welcome Should back, everybody. Pause in between Timmy's time. <laughs> it's Timmy's time. But you said Timmy's. I, I, I had my papers. Time. I had my papers all mixed okay, up. Okay, all mixed up. Yeah. Uh, we're back with Jen Kirkman. Jen, I uh, hope you had a good break there. That was a lot of fun for us. Hopefully it was good I got you. a lot done. Yeah. 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 It looks a lot cleaner back there. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I went in and got the, I got the, the baseboards. I got the ceilings. I mean, phenomenal. Deep clean. Yeah. Can I say how much you. I love the beams? I love yeah, beams. Yeah, good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they're my sister's beams. I can't take any credit for them, but it's, we're beaming it up here. I, um, I, I saw my sister's beams live. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, mm. very good group. Very good group. Um, the uh, we've got a there's a horse barn out back. I mean, it's real festive and, and farmy here, it's really cute. Yeah, my sister's laughing in the background, she's very mad that I didn't pick to do the Three Wise Men movie. Oh, yeah, she's well, watched it twice. Just give hot, give your hot take real quick. What'd yeah. you think? It was amazing. I watched it with my two sisters, so it's like three sisters watching that's the three cool. brothers. Oh, uh, that's cool. And we want to learn the dance, so I do. Um, it was really good. I was, I was uh, jealous, I didn't have anything to do with it. You know, it's one of those things you're like, I wish I wrote that or I wish yeah. I could be part of that. It was very I funny. Them. Yeah, was clever, very funny. quirky movie. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, uh, let's Anyways. get back to a better movie though. Uh, I can't. <laughs> that was movie, but I just better. want to tell everyone in the live chat, I'm not really upset. I'm just being like silly. Like, and someone was like, calm down, just a movie. But listen. That was probably for me. Down. That was probably <laughs> yeah. for me, Oh, Jim. I'm sure it was for me because I'm <laughs> screaming about Nazis. Go on. <laughs> uh, let's get to the wait what, if they, we can find any uh, in this uh, masterpiece. Uh, Brian? Yep. I got a few here. So at one point, Ronnie's boss told him uh, that if they missed the window for the solar <laughs> array, it was going to cost the company millions. No, no, no. And then in the same breath almost said, but... Don't push the employees too hard. That's right. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. If, if you have a timeline for a rocket launch, billions are at play. <laughs> just, the, just that guy, Ronnie's boss is just a huge weight what anyway. The way he just lies to him on the phone yeah. about everything. And uh, she, why was she helping out the prince so much with the list? 
Like, she's blackmailing him. Just give him the list. Say, this is your responsibility, or I quit. Stop doing everything for him. She just done kept doing done. everything. Uh, and the, when the satellite moved, um, and they, oh, this should have been a feels, I think. Uh, they needed to stay late to adjust the coordinates. <laughs> Um, and it was good that the you know the single boss and the young kid with midnight movie tickets let the single mother go home. That's right. Yeah. While they <laughs> stay yeah, late, yeah, to yeah, deal yeah. with the coordinate situation. That's right. That was so. I thoughtful. mean, I can't ever watch It's a Wonderful Life if I don't watch it at midnight, midnight. in a the movie theater. It's the only place you can find that movie. <laughs> Uh, and then the last one, I'll stop here. Is just the board of directors flying in for a meeting? Like this is not a thing. <laughs> Nobody flies in for meetings anymore. It's been years. Nobody does this. <laughs> we just can't keep doing this in movies. Yeah, that is absolutely uncalled for. Yeah. The non-Zoom fly-in <laughs> before Christmas yeah. meeting. What is it, 2015? No. Um, um, Jen? Well, Brian, it's funny that you mentioned the guy with the tickets. To it's a wonderful life. I didn't even think of the angle that he's leaving and the single mom has to stay. Yeah. And it just proves your point. You can't leave. You can't leave work. You, you never can leave. never you can't leave. leave. You can't leave anywhere. That's right. But um, yeah, so for me, this company needs an HR department. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on with the, you're working late on Christmas. And then, yeah, this go-between guy that's like the board might review you. You've had three complaints. There should have been a review then. And then, but, and then, but she mentions that she did have a bereavement leave. So I'm like, well, that sounds, that's pretty good. Not a lot of companies have that. So you had HR at one point, but I guess they dropped the ball on like your boss being toxic and being like, if you don't like it tough, you know? Um, so that's more of a, less of wait, what more just like, I'd like to see a policy put in place, but, um, but I also think like, okay, so why is she in a public school telling a Christmas story? I mean, I haven't been in school in 40 years. Like, I don't know what goes on, but I thought it was kind of like, you know, what about the other kids that maybe are from different religions? Or it just seemed like everybody celebrated Christmas. Um, but I don't know. I felt like it would be something that maybe another parent would get mad about. Like, forget the religious part. This weird Christmas prince, which adds another stress to people's lives because we've got Elf on the Shelf That's and right. Santa Claus. So you would think one parent would complain and be like, I don't want this rogue rocket scientist mom coming in and just telling <laughs> another thing that I have to fulfill. I thought it was just weird to me that they allowed such such things yeah. and uh, oh i was gonna say yeah. I, I i simultaneously agree with you and also think that at least down south all the elementary schools are like christmas is a fair game yeah. yeah it's weird like all the rest of the holidays no but when it comes to christmas they just let yeah. you do it even yeah. though there are plenty of parents that are probably not celebrating christmas out there they just don't care because my kids come home and talk about christmas and the thing the christmas thing they did every day <laughs> And that probably isn't great. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably going to become like an American holiday in a yeah. way. It just means like winter time, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, my sister has yelled to me from the other room that they make a Snoop Dogg elf on the shelf now, if anyone needed that oh, wow. information. Man, yeah. thank you. It's good to <laughs> she's, know. Uh, she's here to help. Well, well, um, what are the ramifications here? What is uh, Snoop Dogg not going to come to our house? Is Snoop Dogg... <laughs> it's I think Snoop elf. tells Santa not Snoop, to come. Right. Oh, he's yeah. got, like, wow. He's got him on the line. Snoop has Santa direct line. Okay, great. That's right. I, I would, it. you know, I buy that, like... I don't believe in Santa, but then if you're like, well, yeah, but Snoop is friends with my big, oh, that kind of makes me like, I, I kind don't want to, yeah. I'm not so sure about Santa, but I also don't want to make Snoop mad. Yeah. And That's so I, That's I'm really thing. conflicted. You can't, you can't lie about the Christmas Prince, but uh, Snoop Dogg on the shelf is <laughs> above board. Above board. <laughs> like, uh, so that's what we need to establish right now. I kind of want one. All right. So my last wait, what? I mean, I have another one, but I'll let it go. I'm sure you guys have the, my favorite part. <laughs> Well, first of all, I think we kind of said this, that we're going to take one thing at a time mm -hmm. after she's already ingratiated this man into her daughter's life. But, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but he goes, um, she's talking about, you know, he spent some time with her kid and he goes, I understand now why she's so important to you. What? <laughs> you didn't understand why a child was important to now the mother I get it. until you had tea with her. And you're like, oh, she's a cool kid. Before, before I didn't get yeah, it. Before I was like, why do you keep this little vagrant around? But now, <laughs> man, it makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a few guys. Uh, you guys have taken some of mine and I've still got a dozen. I'm trying to like, she, delete she, them. She starts off this, this movie, this story, this kid, um, the, the the Nazi says, um, "Why don't I, why don't I, why have I never heard about this Christmas prince?" And she says, "Not everybody knows about the Christmas prince, just my family." So nobody, nobody, nobody. knows about the Christmas. Yeah. It's not just that everybody doesn't know; it's that nobody knows. Right. Yep. 
It's just, literally <laughs> yeah. just my family knows about the Christmas Prince. Uh, he tells a story, he tells a bad one, and it, like she's like, Godzilla visiting the North Pole? <laughs> yeah. And he says, it was the only thing I could remember. <laughs> so, so this is a, this is a, this is a true story. So this, this is a, uh, I don't you remember the one time Godzilla went to yeah. the I also I also wrote down is uh, correcting a drifting satellite really the best time to start being a good boss. Uh, I would say no. Uh, you make yeah. the guy work. You got to yes. you got you got to stay here and correct the the drifting satellite. Um, and I also got a kick out of uh, them uh, coming over to uh to watch a black and white christmas carol with a child yeah she chose it yeah, yeah she chose pick. it yeah, that she, was her pick yeah she got to pick any movie to watch for the christmas prince and yeah. she chose the original christmas and it just carol. so happened to be um you know uh, in the public domain that's right. which is great it's great. <laughs> it worked out for everybody the girl the little girl watches exclusively public domain films and i think we're all better for that if we, you know. i'm still like i'm in my 40s and i'm afraid of that original black <laughs> yeah. and white christmas carol it is so scary so scary. It's terrifying. Yeah. And yeah. but wouldn't you just show a movie that isn't a real movie instead of that? Yes. Like, you know, that's a real she's really she gets it. She's you seven could years watch, old. You she could watch Elf. You could watch, you know, the sweet Noel movie on Disney Plus. No. No, no. no. I want the original. She's doing another Hallmark movie. Yeah. And just yeah. yeah. Easy. Uh, Dan? You know, a lot of people think the moon landing was fake. And uh I don't I don't believe that. However, if you wanted to fake launch a rocket into space. May I recommend Satellite Boost Lab? Uh, <laughs> I I feel as though no one there is actually launching anything. I, I, I don't know how else to describe this. They are always on a time crunch, yet the office is decorated like Brandon Gray is the CEO of Satellite Boost yeah. Labs. And then Ronnie Rowe and Tamara go up to the the roof yeah. and it is like Christmas threw up out there. Mm. Are we doing anything for the rockets? You guys are <laughs> rocket scientists. Dude, when you're up in space, you want to look down and see a few Christmas trees to remind you what's down there. I, so. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that they were trying to pass this space off as a space where people do serious rocket things. I just couldn't make, I couldn't make heads or tails of that at all. Um, so at one point in the movie, Grace is the kid's name. They say she's seven in the movie. And then later in the movie, they say she's eight in the movie. She had a birthday. They literally, no, no. <laughs> they literally don't get the daughter's age right in this movie, which is uh, very, very impressive. Um, the whole problem with Tamara and the Christmas Prince is, is she doesn't have any time on her hands. That mm -hmm. is the crux of this is I don't have time. The only way this would work is if I bribe my boss. So where did all this time come from? Where they walk around all day and just find gifts and do all of this stuff. Um, I, I also have an issue, as we do from time to time, whenever someone is like, it's like my mom always says, or it's like my group always says, it, you did not corner the phrase, focus on one thing at a time. <laughs> I, am, I am sorry. Like, that is just a thing. Like, that is like, it's like I always say, stop when the light is red. No, everyone. You do always say that. It's like, say I always that. Say, like I always say, Merry you know, Christmas. That's right. It's like, it's like I always say, waffles are better than pancakes. That is me. Just me. No one else has that take. I'm not saying that. Like, and she, she can, uh -oh. oh, okay. I'm a, pa I'm a pancake over pancake waffle Pancake over waffle guy. No, yep. the, all the ridges. Oh, the syrup collects. You can play, I mean, yeah, you put on. the syrup in the. Yeah, I understand. It just is really, <laughs> it's really hard. Like, make it something specific. Don't be like, well, you know what the the family's always said. The thing that literally everyone says all the time. That thing, yeah, awesome, great, glad glad <laughs> to hear it. Um, they they go from, and I want to be very clear. We're just now exploring Mars as a country. Like, yep. and Mars, and I did a little bit of Brian Harold research here because Thank I you. couldn't Ooh. get over this. Yeah. Mars is 52 million miles from Earth. Uh -huh. And they just casually throw out in their like Dollar General <laughs> dumpster fire rocket science building, they casually throw out that this guy who was about to be fired has now taken the lead on finding a way to live on Saturn. Saturn's <laughs> and, and moon. Saturn's moon. Oh, I didn't hear that. And, Wait, what? And stop, they, they stop. Yeah. I'm serious. <laughs> didn't catch they, they actually want him to explore yep. the habitability of Saturn's moons. That's right. Now, I already told you- Isn't it like 900 to yes. 1,000 degrees? Okay, Mar so. Mars is 52 million miles away. We just got there in like the year of our Lord 2018 or something. 
Saturn is 925 million miles from Earth. Basically a billion. <laughs> a billion <laughs> miles. They have this little to be clear though. Backwoods office space that's like <sighs> the paper company from you know the office and rocket science is is now planning a trip to a billion miles from Can I here. blow your mind real quick? Please, please do. Um, Enceladus, which is Saturn's sixth largest moon, yeah, is thought <sighs> to be inhabitable. Oh, thank goodness. So, oh. Yeah, well, thank Ooh, you for that's that. recently discovered. And I just do want to say this in defense of this film. They're not <laughs> Go ahead. They're not doing it. He's just exploring. That's exploring right. the idea. Yeah. Exploring the idea. That. That's his new job. They don't do, do it because it's easy. Explore the idea. Somehow Satellite Boost Lab got the inside track on no, that bid. They're just exploring. Well, dude, because they're willing to work on Christmas. That's, what <laughs> that's, that's what it is. why. It's above and beyond. And then lastly. Saturn uh, doesn't care about Christmas. That's right. Saturn doesn't to, care. To it's it literally. Not yet. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's a time travel away. Um you guys love the moment where he says, turn around. Yeah. Could we not find the guy a matching jacket and pants? <laughs> he literally has a bright white jacket that looks like Brent. Sergeant Pepper's Ooh. Christmas album. And then, <laughs> and then his pants are cream colored pleated khakis. And if I'm noticing it, it's a problem. Brent, we had the same feeling at that scene and watching that with Dan today. Was he watched it with me. Like it was I, I was I was getting chills, and he's over there talking about you know pressing the pleats on the front of his pants tighter, and I'm just like, you don't get. I didn't say know. that. I I, I it's just a good thing I wasn't here. Oh. I would have punched a Nazi. I'll say that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this movie's a mess, everyone. Oh. Just a mess. Well, that's all I got. Number four for Brian. Um, <laughs> let's talk about uh, any questions we have. The what the hallmark where we wonder what could have been. Maybe have to give some clear to the questions that we still have. Right? Sure. So I didn't have a clear one. The only thing that I, I kind of was questioning was I thought it was admirable that they did put her in a, a an engineering job like this. It, what, like, Jen, you mentioned that she wasn't planning a party. She wasn't doing anything else. She was just working really hard, and she seemed to be really good at her job. But the company is just a big question. Like, it's hard to imagine that – what is it? Boost la uh, satellite, satellite Boost Labs? Boost How dare Labs you forget that name? From soup yeah. to nuts is launching, building <laughs> so and launching. Where are they launching a yeah. rocket in that space? Building and launching. So you saw that roof. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will, I will say this could be, though, like like Houston. They, 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 they put – uh, shuttles go up from Cape Canaveral, but they're talking right. to Houston. Sure, different satellite offices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a yeah. NASA so in maybe Houston, though. You could launch. Can you not but, launch a shuttle from Houston? I think you can, but they don't usually. I'm just saying, what the communication from Cape Canaveral mm -hmm. is with Houston, mm -hmm. which could be any. It could be a building. It could, it could be, be any building. Yeah. It could be any Office Depot in any valley. <laughs> That's exactly right. Any mountain range. Just, just six cubicles in a dream. So, yeah. <laughs> it's just hard to believe since they can't even Zoom a meeting. That's right. Like, that they would uh, be everybody's got to be fresh for that somewhere else. Yeah. Great yeah. point, Jen. Uh, Jen, what are you still wondering about? Well, I, I thought her dorky coworker was somehow going to be a bigger part of the movie. So I'm just wondering what his deal is. He seems so just kind of like happy-go-lucky. And I don't know why this struck me, but towards the end of the movie – there was just a shot of his hand and he was wearing a wedding ring. And I was like, who's that guy's wife? Like, mm. I just thought maybe he'd have some relationship advice for her, but no matter what she said, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> and I just thought he was like, you know, maybe like some stoner that just, you know, sat there. And then I'm like, well, this guy has a life. Like, I want to know about how he met his wife. Is she a rocket scientist? How did he propose? You know, what's their Christmas? It seems like they've got a lot of Christmas hobbies, like going to the, it's a wonderful life. Like I'd like to follow that guy around for a day. He seems just kind of, chill and just kind of you know doesn't have a lot to well, say and, and he, there was something intriguing he knows how to drive a horse and carriage yep that's all you need to know really <laughs> he knows how that's to drive one saying. he is he is fully equipped to be in charge of the horse and carriage mm -hmm. without any See, training. I think something's going on with him like you know how a lot of these movies it's like oh I'm actually Santa Claus like there's something mm. something <laughs> yeah he may have grown up as an yeah, elf or something did you say that he's going to a midnight showing of It's a Wonderful yes. Life? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. I, I have a hard like I don't go to midnight showings anymore. I've yeah. been to a few in my life. I it's it's not an enjoyable experience. I think you age out. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, aged yeah. out of midnight showings. But to go to a midnight showing of a movie that's been out for fifty years is yeah. 
is a choice. That's not short. Either. It's not short. It's, it's not long. Right. It's also like the first half is a real bummer getting smacked over the ear and stuff. So it's like, you know, that'd be a tough midnight showing. Um, but I also do listen. I don't have a problem with lying to kids. I do it all the time. Uh, but <laughs> I, usually I don't like uh, introduce my child to a lie. So like, hmm. how does that like at some point she was getting ready to tell her the truth about the Christmas Prince, but now you've the muddy, the waters are muddy. I will give them that because now he is, he's in full garb well, half garb. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> how, how does that eventually you have to be like, he, no, he's just Evan. We still love Evan, but he's not the Christmas Prince. So when does that conversation take place? And yeah. how does it go? I'm, I am legitimately interested in the trauma uh, therapy bills that are coming their way. There's no doubt about that. But I also am interested in, in this world where Satellite Boost Lab is a real thing that's really launching uh, uh, rockets, and she gets a job from Rocket City, <laughs> or wherever that is called. Skyrocket. <laughs> Skyrocket. How many of these fly, how many of these fly by night rocket companies are there? Like are there is it like well, it's is it like car companies? Now. Is it like Ford it's and Chevy? It's like yeah. SpaceX and yeah. Jeff Bezos yeah. and Yeah, man, that's NASA. a thing. It's a real thing. It's it's a thing. Now. There's now a, a a company that you can um uh, like invest in and like they're doing rockets. They're doing, they're doing them. They're doing Should we rockets. start a rocket company? I bet all of those companies, yeah, you, I mean, all of those companies have a little bit more to work with than Satellite Boost Lab though, right? I had no problems with Satellite Boost Lab. I can't believe that. I can't believe up. that. I, I just assumed that, that they were true. the they were the Houston to the... They're a terrible Houston. They don't even have a Houston set up. They have terrible management, though, definitely. Yes. Like, terrible management. They don't hire the greatest yeah. people. No. It also sounds like a cell phone company, Satellite Boost. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> Satellite Boost Lab. Maybe that's yeah. what they're launching yeah. into the space is us. Satellite communication. Oh, yeah, maybe. That's our satellite somewhere up there. How about that? Uh, we did, everybody. Jen, tell everybody, uh, you got anything you want to promote or send people somewhere to see things? Listen to our podcast. It's legit fun. R even Rig likes it. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, you can listen to my podcast called No Fun. You can... You, I don't know if this makes me any money, but I want everyone to see it. You can you can buy or rent "Tis the Season to Be Merry" on Amazon. I think yeah, I just saw that. Nice. I, again, it has it doesn't get me anything, but um, or you can just you know just skip my Twitter. It's just me angry. <laughs> Go to my Instagram. I post fun pictures of you know all kinds of holiday things and uh, so at Jen Kirkman or just go to my website jenkirkman.com and all kinds of fun things Jen's there. Jen's um, so modest. She's a New York Times bestselling ah, author. Yep. She's had like three yep. Netflix specials. Like yeah, but you that's can, all old. Yeah, but I mean, come on, Jen. You should now put up I'm a just, picture of your sister's horse. <laughs> On your Instagram for My the sister, people. My sister, well, horse. She's got multiple, and she's got a pony named Fiona. I'll, I'll post pictures. Love to Love see that. When does uh, the Maisel, when does the Maisel come out? Oh, it? yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, yes, uh, we just, I write on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and we just finished, like, the whole show is over now. We filmed it, and um, it, the, and then, um, it about comes the out series in, is the last season? Last season, we filmed, it's all gone now. Um, but there's no more. Least. This is it. No more. Wow, that That's stings. It. I love that show. Did I you? know it's it, it's really like we really landed the plane. So right. I feel like you won't be wanting for more. You won't have any questions that were not answered. Great. Um, you might want more, but it would just be uh, too much at that Excessive. point. Did but you say that there was fireworks at the rap party? Yes, yeah, so we didn't. We had a um, our final table read where the actors get together and read the scripts, and then you know from there we still have to make changes. Uh, the final table read, which is normally just an afternoon thing, um, was at at night for the final one, and they shot off fireworks. <laughs> um, you know, again, this is Amazon, so that's where their money goes, I guess. And so anyway, they sh shot off fireworks. Uh, we film in Brooklyn, and we were on this like rooftop in Brooklyn. And they were shot them over the East River. And it was so funny because it made the news the next day, New York One. And they were like, we don't know what these mysterious fireworks <laughs> were. They were like, not even the police knew. And I was like, wow. that doesn't make me feel very good. But it was really beautiful. And normally I'd be like, that these corporations have too much money. But when you're part of it, like, this is yeah. beautiful. <laughs> we deserve this. Sure. It was on the we like, like how, how do we get out of paying taxes? I mean, we could shoot off we fireworks shoot off out of everybody. Table read, I guess. They're for everyone. Does yeah. that work? I mean, everybody. and there was like, you know, we didn't have a lot of time to eat, but there was drinks flowing. So it was just, you know, just drunk and crying uh, and yeah. fireworks. It was really lovely. Um, there, I will tell everyone if you watch the show and I'm not just saying this, like the nicest, most wonderful cast of down to earth people, no attitudes, no ego. 
this show made a lot of people that are on it famous and you 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 wouldn't even know them from the average person walking down the street that isn't famous like they're just lovely so it's just, it's sad that it's over but um but that's that. So it comes out in like 2023. They've told me nothing. Maybe February, maybe April. Look for fireworks in the sky. And that's how you'll know. <laughs> that's a phenomenal That's show. how you Can't know. Wait. On Can't premiere wait. night, there's going to be fireworks in the sky everywhere. everywhere. So Amazon yeah, committed. We, be on the lookout. Over each individual Amazon subscriber's house, we do fireworks. <laughs> That's right. So That's you get know. your prime. The price went up, but now you know why. That's right. Fireworks. <laughs> get an individual fireworks shows. Uh, we did, everybody. Congratulations, Jen. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's now officially Christmas, so it makes me so happy to see you, buddy. <sighs> Wait, it's officially Christmas because I was on? Is yes. that what you meant? So That's what I'm saying. Oh, I never got... I thought it was because maybe this airs the day after Thanksgiving. Or no. Something. Oh, I'm nope. so... Oh, if you look outside, you'll see it. fireworks in three, <laughs> two. Uh, may we Thanks be the first guys, to wish guys. you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Look, the homework is a That Sounds Fun podcast. It's produced by Tracy Noah's name. It's recorded Just live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. For more information on Deck the Homework, you can go to deckthehomework.com. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here at the studio. Feel free to listen. Feel free to turn it off, whatever you want to. But either way, thanks so much for your support. Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Can 3D printed life-size organ models help to map out complex surgeries ahead of time? Is it possible? It already is right here. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go.